Hello everyone, welcome back. This session we will be talking about introduction on the dashboard techniques. Now dashboard, many of you might have heard the term dashboard, but what exactly I mean by dashboards? Now dashboards is a concept, more of a collection and application of techniques that are present in Excel. In simple terms, it means user friendly, dynamic, and with certain examples, we will find out what it means to begin with I have a data which talks about sales in numbers for four quarters of 2010 and then the total of 2010 similarly four quarters of 2011 and then the total for 2011 as well now this has been divided into four regions of India north east west south and two cities from north two from east some from west and some from south now, if I look at this data, this is the entire bunch of numbers given to me, although the formatting is nice, but the same time, this is all at once. Now, if I contrast this sheet with the next sheet, sheet one solution. Now, this looks very concise. This only talks about region wise, total sales year wise. Now, at this point in time, if I want to find out what has been the sales for East region for the year 2010. I may click on this plus button. Okay, Kolkata, Ranchi, those have been the sales. Now, after having looked at the sales for 2010 and 2011, you may want to delve deep into the quarter wise details of 2010. So this is the plus sign that I'm clicking on. Mm -hmm. So there's the total becoming 13510. Similarly, you can also drill down into the details of Southern region, Western region. North, if you want everything to be shown at once, I will click on this level 2, which is the maximum on the given level. Level 2 here as well. So the entire picture in front of me, if I want to make it concise, let me click on the lowest level, that is level 1. Level 1 here as well. This is how it looks. So this is something we will be talking about as an introductory part of dashboards. Dashboard has many more concepts, some easy, some tricky. We'll be starting with the useful and the easy ones. Now looking at the data and contrasting that with the next sheet, grouped sheet, I would want that all these four columns which are reflecting quarterly details should be hidden and the user might be able to see the data once he clicks on a sum plus sign that you would have seen in the other sheet, this grouped button. So let me show you how to group it. Let me choose column B from the letter B. So I'm not choosing it half-heartedly, something like this. I'm choosing the entire column B, stretching my selection till E, column E, reflecting four quarters. I move to data. Within data, on the right hand side, I will notice something called group. The icon is also reflecting that plus sign that we want. So clicking on the group, you notice this button this button needs some column on which it can sit on that is precisely provided by the column which is reflecting the yearly data. Similarly, I can choose the next four columns that is quarter one till quarter four. One option is to go and click on group. Alternatively, I can also use one shortcut key called F4. When F4 used inside a cell, it is generally used with the respect of dollars fixing absolute and relative referencing but if I am using outside the cells outside the columns and rows it means repeat your last action give it a try for example if you want to color a cell yellow you can use this button but if you click on the another cell and press F4 it means repeat last action so let me delete these yellow cells so what I've done is grouped columns now the application is if I click on this minus button both of them it hides them back. If you want to expand them further, plus button, plus button. So this gives user the benefit that it can click on the button automatically and show or hide the results. Now similarly, you can also do it row wise as well. So you would want that uh, the city wise details should be hidden, only total should be out. So I may select columns, uh, in fact, row six and seven together. Please note, I'm not choosing just half heartedly. I'm choosing row six and seven, the entire thing, and reaching out to data, clicking on grouping. 
selecting Kolkata and Ranchi and pressing the shortcut key which one yep you guessed it right F4 similarly Surat Ahmedabad and Bombay F4 and choosing the next three cities of south and I may also use F4 also I may go to group now you might think that it would take a lot of time it if there were a large group of data I agree we will be talking about something called subtotal later point in time but let's say for now how do I streamline this task let me do one thing let me ungroup the entire thing so let me select the columns in fact I can as long as all the columns are open I can select the entire thing and go to ungroup same goes for row ungroup okay now since the formulas have been provided for the summation as you can see from the total year wise or region wise Excel will be able to identify those as formulas and stop grouping if you do use auto line what is auto outline if I choose these eight columns in fact ten columns including the yearly totals I go to the group button please note I'm not clicking on top of this button I'm clicking on this small drop down out here it gives me an option saying auto outline let's see what happens if I click on that you notice something it did auto outline very intelligently that means it stopped at 2010 and again began at 2011 uh, let me ungroup this all right and let me show you what would have happened had I not used auto outline and I had I used group so you see it is grouping them in one single group which I of course do not want so let me ungroup it and let me use auto outline auto outline yes now the data structure is such you also have formula under the total tab and one row extra so that will help differentiate between where to stop and where to begin grouping once again so let me choose entire region north till end of south including total group auto outline so you see this has been grouped e region wise and of course if you want to click on level 2 to expand this entirely or level 1 out here to make it concise so in fact this is how you use group try with different combinations no harm doesn't corrupt your data it just changes the appearance adds that button for that extra jazz this was grouping ungrouping let me go to sheet 2 where I'll be talking about one of the most interesting stuff in Excel very easy very very appealing as well now here I have 12 months data sales number given Normally we write a basic VLOOKUP formula so that whenever user types in the month let's say May and he is able to arrive at the answer so May is reflecting 1379 I'll be talking about VLOOKUP a bit later or maybe you may have watched the video by now but let's say if instead of May by, by, by mistake the user may have typed in let's say MY would the answer come up certainly not because the input is not correct it is erroneous since garbage in garbage out now to solve this problem I want a facility what is that facility I want that the user should have the option of choosing the options from the given list working mm -hmm. plus if you wanted to write my and press enter it would not have accepted that the value you enter is not valid please retry so there you notice the difference between the two all the formula is same for both so let's find out how to create this drop down list let me choose a cell let's say this one let me delete the contents let me go to data data validation let me click on the small drop down choosing the first option okay now it says by default any cell will allow any value validation criteria allow any value I do not want that I do not want the user to put in any value I want him to put 
a, an option from the given list so I go to the list option okay now source I may start writing January comma February so by the time you finish writing the entire 12 months you'll be half asleep mm -hmm. of course I would not want that I would want you want you to watch the entire video so let me give you a quicker example if I go to data validation once again do not write it I may simply select the source from my given list out here let me include total as well so this is the range starting with equal to ok and you notice yes time saved effort saved so you can create an automated list from a given source as well let me show that once again so I am choosing one cell data validation allow a list and source let me choose January till total okay so next time I will have this drop down in fact once you have created that drop down and you want to replicate that many a times you may simply copy the cell and paste it what would happen is every one of these cells would have that list and the best part is let's say if you change anything out here let's say just BEC the list all of them will be reflecting TEC DEC so let me rectify that DEC EM DER December now it sounds and looks very easy give it a try it is very very useful to prepare user inputs let's say it could be an option of yes no it could be an additional one let's say can't say it could be vendor ID codes it could be state names whatever your input options could be now you might say uh, that my source is in this sheet but the drop down list that I want I want in another sheet so sheet 3 I go you may say this is the sheet where I would want the drop down list so let me try it out data data validation allow a list have a quick look allow a list and source obviously my tendency would be to go to the other sheet sheet 2 but when I try to do that till 2007 version of Excel it doesn't allow me to go and select the other sheet and you might think if that is not allowed till 2007 version of Excel why not go to original source data copy that copy that after which paste it in your destination sheet and then create a drop down list from here directly but again I would not want that because sometimes I would want assumption or input to be in a separate sheet, sheet as the output so let me show you a workaround let me do one thing let me talk about a concept called naming to illustrate that point let's say if you choose any cell you notice this name box at the top left it mentions that cell reference alternatively if you type the cell reference out here C12 let's say and press enter it will take you to C12 now this has a very good application if you choose a group of cells precisely a range and you go to a name box and give it a name let's say something called months now once you have written that make sure you press enter what does enter do henceforth in this entire workbook everyone will know who months is referred to so for example if your cell selection is out here and you go to this small drop down and choose months automatically the selection points to the group of months okay if that is so then uh, how how do we apply that where do we apply that let me come to the point sheet 3 since we know who months is so if I choose months from here it lets me go back to the other sheet so as of now let me go to sheet 3 because my prime objective is to create a drop down list out here so data data validation allow a list of course I know that now source I can use a shortcut key F3 what F3 will do is it will give you the list of names that you might have used one of which we we have used is months so let me choose months okay you notice the equal to sign coming in now that's very important because had that equal to not been there let's see what would we have got mm. 
months i would not want that so let me correct it data data validation we know it's a list and let me ensure that equal to is present okay yep you got it this is naming this is the application of naming once we named it it is well known by other sheets in the same workbook and you can use that in your formula in your drop down list as well another application is also present in financial modeling for example some numbers you might use very very often let's say inr us dollar foreign exchange rate it could be interest rates now several times what happens you always try to connect with this sheet cell e8 whenever you want to use that for example in sheet 2 if you wanted irr value of all these dollar sales you would have said equal to 1243 multiplied with and then would have gone to sheet 3 and chosen the cell and also pressed f4 to make sure this would have been fixed then press enter and then copy pasted it down now this is just once crude cell linking you might want to use this dollars the conversion ratio somewhere else as, as well so i want to name it why would i want to name it because if i name it i'll be able to recall the cell reference even better let me illustrate the point let's say i choose this cell and i name this as let's say usd inr usd inr enter So now everybody in the workbook know who USD INR is. Okay, let me go to sheet two. Let me delete all these computed values and let me rewrite another formula which says whatever one, two, four, three, the sales are multiplied with, and let me remember the shortcut key F three. USD INR. That space name box for you. Okay, enter. Notice the same results. and just like a typical formula if you change anything out here let's say just for an example 10 all multiplied with 10 so this is what naming does you can use this wherever you would want to in the same workbook for example if i write in equal to usd you'll notice this ticket sign comes in which reflects name so if i press the tab key and press enter it will give me 10 the moment i change this to let's say 55 55 So in the entire workbook, everybody now know who USD INR is, who month is. Of course, you may also want to sometime edit the name. Let's say instead of USD INR, you may want to rectify and name it INR USD. So how do you do that? You'll have to go to Formulas, Name Manager, one who manages the names. So I go to Formulas, Name Manager. and there are few invalid names so let me delete those delete yep i want to delete that but the ones which are valid amongst them i want to rename it so let me go to edit this is the name let me just reverse it just for experimentation okay close so now see inr usd the name saying equal to inr usd so equal to f3 inr usd enter So you name it from the name box as given in the screenshot you can also edit rectify or delete it from the formulas name manager So this was about drop down list under the data validation and how do you connect with name there are several other applications of data validation I'll discuss that in the next level For now give it a try very very useful drop down list along with the naming in fact in 2010 version of excel you would not need to name it before you want to link up in the drop down list that has been taken care of that has been rectified in 2010 so a couple of things we discussed we talked about basic grouping we talked about auto outline assuming that the formula has been mentioned in the grouped data sheet 2 where we talked about the data validation list and in sheet 3 we talked about how you may name cell or ranges that you can use it anytime later in the same workbook see you in the next session